everybody, this is Ricky from Ricky's Train Videos. Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration on the hidden features of MTHDCS. In this video I'm going to show you the less common features of DCS and go into detail with those. The hidden features of DCS that I'll be explaining today are idle sounds, soft keys, odometer, chronometer, suspended startup, suspended shutdown, lights, microphone, protocast, PFA, read, Doppler, auto Doppler, e-stop, coupler slack, conventional mode, track voltage, route tracker, maintenance, track signal, switches, and accessories. First up on the list is idle sounds. Idle sounds on a locomotive are played either randomly or by command on any proto sound 2 or 3 locomotive. These sounds can be the engine getting filled up with gas or water being put into the tender and they can also be crew talk. So I'm going to demonstrate that on the Premier 1943. started up and on the DCS remote when I press SI1 make sure the sand bins are topped off all right I'll check that out sand bins are topped off that triggers a crew conversation about the sand bins if I press SI2 or SI3 then I will get a different conversation Next up on the list is soft keys. On the DCS remote, it is labeled S1, S2, S3, S4, and S5. Each of those has a different function. Before, when I pressed SI1, that was soft key number one, which triggered the conversation. If I press S2, that triggers the forward sound. S3 would be the reverse signal. And S4 is the crossing. Yeah, if I click the on and off button and just tap it, I will get another list. So this is now SO2, which is sound 2, LNB, illuminated number boards, STW, train wreck. As I keep going, I can get more soft keys. When I get to this screen and press S4, I will get a list of about 30 different functions on the DCS remote. Number three is chronometer and odometer. For the odometer, I can press S4 in this cage, which is DOD. This tells me how many scale miles this engine has run. So this engine has run 234.9 scale miles. In order to get out of the screen, click menu and menu again. To see the, to see the chronometer, press DCH. This tells you how many hours the engine has been powered up. As you can see, it is still going. So 1943 has been powered up for 23 hours, 8 minutes, and 56 seconds. Number four is the lights. There are two different ways to control the headlights. One is by pressing number seven, which turns off the headlight. To turn the headlight back on, press number seven again. In order to control the number boards and the uh, interior cab light, scroll over to this screen. L and B is illuminated number boards. Number six is the microphone feature. The microphone feature allows you to speak into the DCS remote and then that sound will be played through the engine speaker. You can do this on the DCS remote by pressing the MIC button. When it is pressed, dispatch will come up on the screen and you can talk. I'm going to demonstrate this now. Hello everybody, this is Ricky from Ricky's Train Videos and I'm speaking on the microphone of Union Pacific number 1943. I've stepped about 15 feet away from the locomotive right now, and sound is still coming out. 
in order to get out of the microphone feature, simply release your finger off of the MIC button. Next up on the list is the Protocast feature. Protocast allows you to play a song or video through the engine speakers using the DCS remote or the WIU. In order to use this feature, you will need a male-to-male -male adapter for headphones, which goes into the Protocast audio section of the TIU. You can then select a video on YouTube, Google Drive, or music, whatever it happens to be, and play it through the engine speakers. In order to do that, load your video or music and plug it in to the other end of the phone or tablet or computer. Then on the DCS remote, press number 8, which is protocast. The sounds will cut out. Press play. And there's music. Right now, I am playing We're a Great Big Rolling Railroad. In order to turn off the protocast feature, simply pause the video and press number 8 again. The sounds have now returned to the locomotive. Another DCS feature is the PFA or passenger freight announcements. In order to activate this, press number 9 on the DCS remote. PFA is now on. In order to continue the sequence, press the direction button until the sequence has ended. Local freight calling dispatcher, over. This is dispatcher. You want clearance out of the yard, don't you? That's correct, over. Sequence one has now ended. I'm now going to press direction and go to sequence number two. I've got good news for you. You're next in line. I just need to check and see if track two is clear. Stand by, over. Roger that dispatcher, standing by. Okay, we had freight on number two. He's clear. Uh, there's a foreman who wants time on track number one soon. Okay, I can put you on track one right now if you're ready to go. Over. I'm ready now. Over. Dispatcher, I've got a proceed signal and I'm moving out. Over. Roger that. Have a safe day. Dispatcher out. Local freight out. Set a quick set speed and the engine will move out. Up next is the read feature. The read feature will tell you how many active engines you have on the track. I have two tracks on my layout. On track two is 1943, and on track one I have Big Boy number 4018 and the Rail King Mohawk. Over here on the yard, these stubs are not on. These are controlled independently by the control box. As you can see, the bumpers are not on. So these engines would be considered inactive. When I press the read button, the DCS remote and the TIU is now reading the tracks looking for active engines. Now DCS has found that there are three active engines on the track. The Mohawk, the Big Boy, and 1943. All the other engines are now designated as inactive engines, as there is no power on the track. Up next is the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect gives you the effect that the train is going by, it gets higher pitched, the sounds, and then they die down as it gets farther away. I'm going to demonstrate this now.
1943 is now on the move. When I press zero on the DCS remote, the sounds are going to cut out and then come back very, very sh slowly. In order to get out of the Doppler effect, press zero again and the sounds will return. Next up is Doppler loop. The Doppler loop effect allows you to have the Doppler keep going throughout the entire layout. In order to do this, press menu, sound, and then scroll down to Doppler loop. It is very important for the Doppler effect loop to start and end on the same point. Otherwise, the Doppler effect will restart a little closer or farther than it was before, so you have to make sure that it starts and stops at the same point. Click begin and move the engine. DCS is now tracking how long this Doppler effect is going to be, so it will make sure that the Doppler effect stays on the entire time. The train has now done a complete lap, and I'm going to stop the train at the same point. Click end. In order to get, to get the Doppler loop on, go to menu, sound, Doppler loop, click on to turn it on, run the train, and click off to stop it. The next thing I'm going to show you is the emergency stop button. This is the red e-stop button directly under number 9 on the DCS remote, and this button is only to be used in an emergency. For example, if there was a foreign object on the tracks, or if someone's fingers was on the tracks, and you wanted to get it out of the way, but it was too late, if you press the e-stop button, it will immediately cut off the power to the tracks, and the engine will stop dead in its tracks. I'm going to demonstrate this to you now. I'm going to back up the locomotive a little bit. And then press the red e-stop button. So we're going, having a nice time, and oh, there's something on the tracks. The engine has stopped dead in its tracks. It shuts down. Now the TIU is saying all stopped, reset TIU and remote power. So the TIU said that's it. I'm going to shut everything down. There is now no power on the tracks. Everything has been turned off. In order to reset the TIU, you have to unplug it. Make sure there is no power on the TIU, reset the power to the tracks, and turn off the remote, 
and then you can resume to normal operating conditions. Up next is the coupler slack. The coupler slack is, well, an effect where it sounds like coupler slack. In order to ha have this happen, on soft key number one on the main screen, press SCS. Next time you move the engine, there are a couple are slack. You can add this feature to all your locomotives by going into the menu and pressing auto coupler. This will enable this effect on all your engines. Now, this effect will not work when the bell is on. Next up is, is conventional mode. This allows you can to control the engine through conventionally through the remote. Scroll over, click more. Scroll down. And click conventional mode in order to add this. If you want to take it off, go back and click conventional mode again and it will turn it off. Track voltage is next. There are many ways to view the track voltage. One of them is through the transformer or even just seeing if a lighted car is on. If you do not have a transformer that tells you how much track voltage, there is a very easy way for DCS to tell you. Go into any ProtoSound 2 or 3 engine, click more, scroll down, and click track voltage. I'm getting 18.9 volts on my track right now. Up next is measure root. Click more. And click measure root. DCS is now going to be measuring in scale miles how long my track is. Next on the list is maintenance. Click more. And go to maintenance. When you start up the engine and the engine senses something is wrong, it will come up and say on the DCS screen, maintenance required. You can then go see, oh, what's wrong with my engine? Once you have diagnosed the problem and have the problem resolved, DCS will not know that. You have to go back into the system and click maintenance. That will reset in the maintenance code and it will not pop up as maintenance required any longer until another problem arises. Track signal is next. This feature is very useful on large layouts to see where a track has to be cleaned or where improvements have to be made. Click more and go to track signal. Once I press this button, the sounds are going to be cut out and then on the screen it will tell me how good the track signal is. This is telling me that the quality is 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. 10 is best. My track signal quality is 10. To end it, click end and you now have full control of the engine again. Next up is switches. In order to use switches, you will need the AIU or accessory interface unit. In order to throw a switch, go to SW and click on the switch desired to throw. If I want to throw a yard 42, I press the button and it throws a switch. It is wired through these three wires on the switch, which then goes to the AIU, which is then connected to the TIU through a special cable. Last up on the list is accessories. You can use it to turn on lights or buildings or even small accessories that were used in the post-war era. In order to do this, click ACC and then you will have these street lights, which I have here, which I can turn on with the AIU. These must be wired individually. To turn them off, click S4, which is off, and the street lights will turn off. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something about DCS and, the, and its 
less common features. If you have any questions, feel free to comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much, and have a great day.